Hey everybody, what's up? It's Dan Harris, host of the Fantasy Bros Football Podcast. Thanks for checking out our video series over at youtube.com slash fantasy bros. Today we're going to be talking about my top 10 players that you'll regret drafting. Now all of these players offer value in their own right, but based on their current average draft position, you'll regret taking them where you need to in order to land them in your drafts. Number 10, Mark Andrews. Do not hate, please. I recognize that Andrews is an excellent talent, but this is far more about his draft price than his production. With a healthy Marquise Brown and natural touchdown regression for Lamar Jackson, it's hard to see Andrews matching his 852-yard, 10-touchdown performance from a year ago. Even if he could, you need to draft Andrews at about the 3-4 turn in half PPR leagues, and that's just way too high when you could be drafting Calvin Ridley, James Conner, or even Melvin Gordon who are going after him in consensus ADP. If you don't get Travis Kelsey or George Kittle, you should be waiting on tight end this year and not wasting an early pick on someone like Andrews. Number nine, let's talk about Melvin Gordon, who I just mentioned. I like Melvin Gordon as a player. I'd be fine to have him on my fantasy team, but not as the 17th running back off the board. Gordon has never been the most efficient rusher and is now going from a quarterback who targeted his running backs about eight times a game to one who targeted his running backs about five times a game. Now, it's a new offensive coordinator in Denver, but the Broncos have always been a committee backfield with Philip Lindsay, who, by the way, apparently looks good and should still siphon off plenty of carries. And Gordon has had no preseason games to get acclimated into the offense. Taking Gordon as a mid-tier RB2 just ignores the reality of the situation he finds himself in. It's not a great one. Number eight, let's turn to the wide receiver position and discuss Cortland Sutton. Sutton is an outstanding football player, but he should not be going as a wide receiver 18 in drafts. Think about it this way. Sutton saw 125 targets last year and 43% of the Broncos air yards and finished as the wide receiver 19 in fantasy. Now you've also got Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler who is recovering from injury and Noah Fant is still around. Does that really sound like someone who should be drafted ahead of where he finished last year? Not to me. If you pass on other wide receivers like DJ Chark and Terry McLaurin as drafters are doing, you'll regret it. And number seven, let's talk about Matt Breida. You're not wasting huge draft capital on Breida, but I mean, he's being drafted as the 33rd running back in half PPR leagues. 33rd. That's over James White and J.K. Dobbins and Marlon Mack and Tariq Cohen. Matt Breida is an awesome player. Awesome. Legitimately, the type of guy who is on crutches in the second quarter and scoring touchdowns in the fourth. But absent an injury to Jordan Howard, what exactly is his upside here? You're probably looking at what, about 150 touches behind what is perhaps the worst offensive line in football. Does he carry upside with a Howard injury? Sure. But Breida battles injury himself every single year. And if you want upside in the backfield with an injury, that's Dobbins or Matt, not Breida. Again, great player, but you'll regret passing on others to take him. Number six, Amari Cooper. If you are a part of the Cowboys offense other than Amari Cooper, you're a target in drafts. And Cooper is a wonderful player, but as the 13th wide receiver off the board, it's a little too rich. Michael Gallup is on the verge of becoming an elite wide receiver. C.D. Lamb is a vast improvement over Randall Cobb, and Blake Jarwin should subsume most of Jason Witten's targets and make the overall tight end position for Dallas better. There are plenty of vacated targets, but with really solid options all around, is Cooper necessarily going to see a 20% target share again? He wasn't particularly consistent last year either, pulling in fewer than 8 PPR points in almost a third of his games. And while some of that was due to injury, he has never had a full season of consistently excellent play for one reason or another. Cooper should certainly be drafted as a wide receiver too, but a mid-tier one, rather than a borderline wide receiver one. At number five, Jared Cook. Cook had a great season last year, but is he really scoring nine touchdowns on 65 targets again? Yeah, he does get targeted downfield, but the addition of Emmanuel Sanders, the positive reports on Traquan Smith, and the health of the running game should lessen Cook's upside. Again, this is the year where there are a million upside tight ends, so there is no reason for Cook to be going as the ninth guy off the board at the position. There are still plenty of usable wide receivers and running backs in that range who you should be targeting instead. At number four, Devin Singletary. I'm sorry, I just cannot do the borderline RB2 thing with Singletary. What exactly is his touchdown upside if everything breaks right? Josh Allen factors into the goal line work, 
and Frank Gore tried but failed to do so also. But Zach Moss is not going to fail. He is a beast with yards after contact and forcing missed tackles, and so long as he's healthy, he's going to cut in significantly to Singletary's workload. And that's especially true given that Singletary fumbled four times last year and had struggled with fumbles so far in camp. Singletary is a flex play, but even someone like Kareem Hunt, who offers a weekly floor with upside, should be drafted ahead of him. At number three, Devontae Parker. This is a bit of a switch for me, and part of that is that Parker has been battling a minor nagging injury through camp. But a bigger part of it is the health of Preston Williams. In the eight games with Preston Williams last season, Parker had six and a half targets and fewer than 10 half PPR fantasy points per game. In the eight games without Williams, nine and a half targets and 16 half PPR fantasy points per game. Parker is very talented and will have an excellent year, I'm sure. But the top 24 wide receivers this year are all really, really good. You shouldn't pass on Robert Woods or DJ Chark to draft Parker with Williams Health looking positive. At number two, Drew Brees. Let me make it clear, I roster Drew Brees in a lot of places. But that's because I'm getting him as the QB 9 or 10 or even later and in the 10th round. If you're drafting Drew Brees in round 6 like his consensus ADP shows, then you are just doing this whole thing wrong. He's not going to approach the nearly 600 pass attempts he was on pace for last year, and his touchdown rate is not going to be above 7% again. He's a fine fantasy option. But first, draft him after Matt Ryan, and second, don't do it for several more rounds. Seriously, absent Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes, you should not be thinking about drafting any quarterback until the sixth round, and then it should be someone like Dak Prescott. Finally, at number one, it's Odell Beckham Jr. Yes, I am scared when I say this, but come on now with the ninth receiver off the board here. Beckham is immensely talented, but despite playing through an injury all of last year, he has still already missed 21 games in his young career. Under Kevin Stefanski, the Vikings ran the ball 48% of the time last year, and with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, they'll probably lean on the run again. Considering the fewer pass attempts for Baker Mayfield, and the additional mouths to feed with Austin Hooper and Hunt for the entire year, there is almost no chance that Beckham sees the 10 targets per game that he's used to, or the 25% target share he saw last year. He could explode. But why waste an early third round pick when there are much safer options going after him who also offer tremendous upside? Thanks for checking out our latest video. Let me know in the comments who you think your top players that will regret drafting are this year. As always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fantasy Pros so you don't miss any of the great content that we'll be producing all season long.